Well, we're coming to you again from the jungle area where we've been camping for six weeks and uh, talking about our series on communication. Very important thing. This is number three in the series. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to start with a little story. This is a true story. It happened in 1978 in the town where I grew up in Cranbrook, BC. Um, there was a young guy who was uh, just a bit younger than I in high school. Terry White was his name. And he was on an airplane coming home from, to Cranbrook from Calgary. Uh, I think it was Calgary or someplace else in BC. And when the plane came into Cranbrook, it was a very heavy snowstorm. And you might have remembered this story where there was a snowplow on the runway. So what happened is the pilots, because it was so stormy, instead of landing at their normal ETA, their, their, their proper time, they shortcutted 10 minutes by not going around the beacon, the, the homing beacon for the, for the landing. Um, and they came straight into the airport. The guy in the snowplow, they always allow five minutes before every flight lands, but he was still on the air, or still on the runway. So the plane landed and then suddenly saw the snowplow in front of them. Uh, so what happened is the guy had, the pilot had his reverse thrusters on full and then decided he needed to take off. So he punched it full bore to take off and he did take off. He cleared the snowplow. But what happened is one of the reverse thrusters got stuck on. So you've got two engines, one on each wing, one going full bore ahead, one going full bore backwards. And the plane just started, you know, it, it was crazy, right? And um, so this, this young guy sit, finds himself sitting in the tail of the airplane with no airplane in front of him. And uh, the whole thing is just spread all over. It's quite a story. There was a stewardess alive. There was five people that didn't die. 43 people died in the crash. Wow. What happened was that the pilots coming in were supposed to give the airport a new ETA, estimated time of arrival, but they didn't bother. They thought everything's fine, we'll just come on in, we don't need to worry about it. And they landed and you know, 43 people died, in, in, including them. The actual, the, the uh, federal air, air, whatever it is, authority, actually made a new ruling out of that air crash that um, your ETA always has to be reconfirmed at the last little whatever it is, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. to save that thing from happening again. Mm -hmm. It was a terrible crash, you know, and, and uh, of course a lot of people that we knew died in that crash. Um, and this is a communication thing where, uh, you know, not all of our communication is that detrimental mm -hmm. or that carries that level of responsibility and risk. But yeah, when you think about it, Becky, we got communication misses in our ministry, mm -hmm. and I suppose in every ministry, every company, that actually costs us a ton of money. Oh. <laughs> God. You know, yeah. I, I thought I told you, no, you didn't tell me. Now mm -hmm. you got to go to Laos, you know, <laughs> yeah. and that kind of stuff. I mean, it, it has, it's cost us a ton yeah. of money. There was one year where we had a big communication mishap. Somebody misunderstood something on a government level. And yeah, it ended up costing us a lot of yeah. money. And it's hard to re-fix or correct, course correct yeah. that thing that happens. And so the question that we're dealing with today in communication is who is responsible mm -hmm. And what does that responsibility entail? Because there's a lot of um, issues with understanding communication and sometimes it's because we already have an assumption. Yeah. I think I already know what you're gonna tell me or I think I already get where we're going mm -hmm. or we're not really listening. Yeah. Uh, or the other problem is sometimes we're feeling so insecure that we're waiting for the rebuttal, we're waiting for the reply. So right. it's, it's again another problem where you're not actually hearing properly but it's not because you know, of whatever, your laziness, you're just insecure. Yeah. And so when you think back of, of some of the issues we've had, it has been that people have either yes. assumed they understood something that they mm -hmm. didn't get quite right. And even when you challenge them on it, they were so set in their, in their understanding that they wouldn't even look at the possibility of maybe there is another thing yeah, that I'm right. missing here. Yeah, that's and in right. the end, it caused us a lot of problems. Yeah. So and in, in fact, it comes back down to, it's really hard to fix mm -hmm. where that responsibility should have lied because in our view, yeah, you should have told mm -hmm. them. And in their view, I thought I knew. everything was, yeah, right. Yeah, I knew, I, I told them what I know, and, and but what you knew was wrong. So if you find yourself saying things like, well, I didn't know, mm -hmm. right? If there's a problem, something comes up and you say, I didn't know. Or if you say things like, well, you didn't tell me. Or one of my favorites is, well, they said, you said. I get that a mm, lot, right? right Suddenly right. you're faced with a problem and somebody says, well, somebody told me that you said, well, did I tell you directly? Because if I didn't, <laughs> then that's just hearsay, right? So yeah. when we're having those issues, 
The problem is we're not sure where the lines of responsibility mm -hmm. are. And the truth of the matter is I'm 100% responsible to figure out what it is that I need to know and I'm 100% responsible to communicate what other people need to know mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. It's kind of like the student, right? When you're the student, it's 100% your responsibility to learn, whether your teacher is great or not. Mm -hmm. It's still your responsibility to learn. But when you're the teacher, it's your responsibility to make sure that the student gets the content, right. whether your yeah. students are great or not, you know? And so if we each of us have that understanding of I am responsible, mm -hmm. whatever it is that I feel like I don't know, ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or I feel yeah. like there's confusion and not clarity, ask. Yeah, that's right. Or where I feel like maybe somebody needs to know something, just say. It's better to say mm -hmm. and assume that they don't know and say it again yeah. or ask mm -hmm. than to actually make an assumption and then actually create a problem because you're not being responsible with what you actually have or yeah. don't know. Yeah, that's certainly a big one. It's, a, it, it's quite a thing. I think, Becky, that one of the best communications I ever receive is a little message that says, noted yeah <laughs> or I got that yes. or don't worry about that anymore I understood it yeah. um, and then you've got it and and I think that's probably why we do a lot of our communication uh, in messages text mm -hmm. emails and that kind of thing rather than verbally because yes. verbal communication there's really no follow-up there's no paper trail well our rule in the ministry is whatever you verbally tell somebody they will 100% of the time forget Mm -hmm. So, you know, you need to have those verbal conversations, but at the end of every conversation, you have to actually write down what was agreed upon, whose responsibility is it, what are the jobs, what are the tasks, mm -hmm. what are the timelines? Because if we don't actually have it in writing, different people will come away with different things. Yeah. You could have had the same meeting and somebody decides, oh, I thought we were going to paint the room purple. Well, no, you said green. Well, I thought blue was the color. And you're <laughs> like, I thought we were all in the same meeting together. But it's like confusion, mayhem, mm -hmm. you know? So... <laughs> One of the uh, quotes that I like from John Whitmore, he says, we all like to believe that the problem lies in other people. This is mm -hmm. talking about communication. It gives us the feeling that we act correctly and that we ourselves do not have to change anything. Right. And this is one of the biggest things. If the communication issue is your problem, then it's outside of my control to actually change anything. Mm -hmm. But if suddenly I take full responsibility for what I need to know and what I need to communicate, then I'm responsible and I have not just an obligation, but I have an ability, an mm -hmm. opportunity mm -hmm. to actually change something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so we've got a number of things that we put in place for mm -hmm. communicating. Um, and, and part of it too is I think learning how different people communicate. We communicate with people in Canada, our office in Canada, our mm -hmm. accountant and, and you know the, the board of directors one way and then uh, people around the ministry and then people that are in the churches planting be in different places. And so I, I find that we've got a lot of different um, you know apps running tools, yeah. <laughs> yeah, tools. Um, but but let's go over the, the main ones, the okay. basic ones. So that we've one of the big on. ones that we use in our ministry is Google Calendar. And basically what that is, is you have every area of the ministry color coded. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got the Bible school, we've got income producing ministries, we've got itineraries from travel, we've got uh, guest teachers coming and all of those things. And everything has to go on Google Calendar. And so basically every single person, staff member is responsible to open up Google Calendar mm -hmm. every day and check the calendar and see what's coming up. And it's also my responsibility to add to it. So if I'm flying yes. somewhere, I need to add to it. If I know mm -hmm. about a program that's coming up, like Kids Day is coming up here, it's my responsibility to add to it. And the big thing that we have with that is conflicts, mm -hmm. where somebody will come along and say, well, oh, well, I wanted to do a conference on that day. And the rule is the first guy on the calendar gets the date. That's right. That's as simple as that. <laughs> the guy who uses the calendar gets <laughs> yeah, the date. That's yeah. it. Uh, the other thing that we use for communicating as a group, as a team, is Slack. Mm -hmm. And that works really well because you have different streams that you can use. It kind of works like Messenger. And it's a free application that you can actually download. And it works with Mac or PC or whatever. But basically what it does is we can divide it into streams like VABC mm -hmm. or into uh, missionaries. And we can also divide it by projects. So yeah. like Summit 2019 or whatever it is. And that works really, really well for us. It does. You can yeah. add pictures. You can add anything yeah, to that. Files, and it works you can upload really well. there and they stay there. And the thing I like about Slack too. Well, one of our rules is no emojis, jokes, fiddling around. Yeah. Let's just keep it all business uh, because it, otherwise it gets cluttered. Sometimes yeah. Messenger can get annoying like that, right? Oh, like yeah, you say, crazy, like, yeah. let's have a party on Friday and then there's 15 stickers and then yeah. the person who comes 20 minutes later doesn't know what they're, you know, thumbs upping That's about. That's uh, the other thing that we use is staff meeting. We have a weekly staff meeting and the first part of staff meeting is a teaching by you where you actually communicate vision and purpose to keep mm -hmm. us on focus. 
And then the rest of the staff meeting is where we go through things that we need to know. We always do a training in there. Yeah. And then other than that, we go through things that we need to know as the ministry team. So in that staff meeting, the whole staff meeting, we're not dealing with, you know, who's going to pay for the water or who's going to, you know. Yeah. We're dealing with things that deal with the whole team. Mm-hmm. And then other than that, every department is also responsible to have their own staff meeting. That's right. And the only rule about that is you have to like it. Yeah. You have to enjoy staff. And it is enjoyable. I mean, it's great, really. It is. Yeah. Um, and we keep it within an hour as well. So yeah. there's a lot of tools that you can use, but basically the bottom line that we're trying to communicate today, our communication to you, is that it's your responsibility. What you don't know, mm-hmm. it's your responsibility to find out. And what you do know, it's your responsibility to communicate. That's it. And I just wanted to end by saying everybody's got a water buffalo. <laughs>